Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about five signs that you will be a stock market millionaire. Now, this isn't like, oh, you're going to be a stock market millionaire yet next year, or you're going to be, you know, as rich as Warren Buffett someday. No, this is not some kind of BS video about that, right? This is a serious video about five signs that you, over time, can absolutely become a multimillionaire in the stock market. The things that I would see in someone and be able to judge them as that's someone that's going to go far stock market gain or someone if you're not doing these type of things and you don't have these type of traits and these signs aren't shown good chance you're probably not going to have a ton of success over the long term maybe you can you know have some little success you know in the short term and those kinds of things but long term not so much and obviously I'm a stock picker I think you'll get much better returns if, if you have that type of DNA where you can be a stock picker over time versus just throwing money into a 401k or something I think everybody that actually watches my channel that probably knows that if you're new to the channel you probably don't know that so I just want to explain that up front in uh, things like that guys so let's talk about this number one uh, you got to have an understanding of business someone that has an understanding of business I would say has a great chance to be a great stock market investor a great chance understanding of how business works because in, in order to be a successful stock market investor, you gotta understand business. You gotta understand products and services. You gotta be able to see around the corner a little bit. You gotta be able to look at facts and make judgments off of where those facts are going for right or for wrong. That's what you gotta do. It's about being a businessman at the end of the day. You show me the greatest stock market investors ever, and I'll show you a bunch of great businessmen, a bunch of people that could make gut decisions on business. Because with all the financials in the world, all the stuff I talk about in my stock market book, and how to judge a company, and all this stuff, and, and PE ratios, and income statements, and looking at you know how much profitability, at the end of the day, at the end of a day, it's a gut decision. It's a gut decision whether you buy that stock or don't buy that stock. You take all that other stuff into, into account, the, the PE ratios, the growth rates, the, the what the company's done in the past, you take all that in there, right? The balance sheet. But at the end of the day, it's a gut decision to buy that stock or sell that stock or don't even touch it. It's a gut decision. So the better you are at business, you're be the more you're, the more levels up your understanding of businesses, the better chance you're going to have of being a very successful investor, guys. So, you know, that's just key. That is just absolutely key if you want to be a stock market millionaire. You got to understand business, which is one of the reasons I preach entrepreneurship so hard on this channel. The three subjects I talk about: stock market, entrepreneurship. In personal finance, entrepreneurship so big, not just because it can drastically increase every single person watching this video right now, uh, wealth long term, but also because if you're going to understand stock market, if you're going to be a good stock picker, you got to understand business. There's no way around that. you got to understand business, guys. So that is sign number one. Sign number two is that you are confident in your own decision making. You are very confident in your skin. You are very confident when you go out and buy a stock that that's the right stock. doesn't mean you can't ever second guess yourself or, or really you know, decide, mm, should I stick my money in this stock or that stock? It just means at the end of the day, you make a decision and you know that's the right decision and you are not influenced by some guy on TV that says, you know, you should not buy stock right now. You shouldn't buy Apple stock because of ABC reason. All of a sudden you're like, shit, he says I shouldn't buy Apple stock. Let me sell it right now. You cannot be like that. You got to be confident. You got to be crazy confident because there's going to be so much negativity that comes around you when you're stock market investing or that you're going to read about this stock or that stock. You just got to flood all that out and be confident. You show me someone that's super confident in their own decision making, I'll show you someone that's on the right track to being a stock market millionaire. Absolutely. Number three, you have to have respect for money. Everything in life you have to have respect for or you're going to get disrespect in the end. I've always had respect for money except for 2015. When I, and, and what happened in 2015? I lost $75,000. Lost $75,000 because I lost my respect for money. I lost my respect for money. You got to have respect for money. When you have respect for money, Dude, like, like you don't just stick your money in whatever stock, you know, you, you like think that through 110%. You research a company 110% when you have respect for money. We're in, and I can, I can tell somebody that doesn't have respect for money in a second versus someone that respects money. 
The kind of people that don't respect money are the kind of people that you go to the bar and they just start getting whatever kind of drinks, doesn't matter the price, and it's not like they're on vacation. That's just the way they live. Or, or they, they're they walking around, you're walking around Best Buy with them and they're like, oh, look at those headphones, they look sick, I'm gonna buy them. Like, those are the people that don't have any damn respect for money. Like, people that have respect for money, like, think things through. Unless maybe they're on vacation, like, like everyday decision making on buying it or something, they think about that. They have respect for money. They don't disrespect money by just spending it or just doing whatever the hell they want to do with money or just sticking it in whatever stock. You, I'll show you another example. Like people that just stick their money in whatever speculative stock, even though it's like a scam and it might be, you know, some penny stock or something like that. Those people don't have respect for money. They don't have respect for money when there's nothing financially even backing that company. They don't have respect for money. They just want to gamble. People People that go on the strip and gamble, they don't have respect for money. Unless maybe on their vac they're on their own vacation. If they're on vacation, I respect that. You know, spend your money however you want. But if you're doing that in your regular life and you're going to the casino, you don't have respect for money, man. You don't have respect for money. You gotta have respect for money. It's like anything in life. You don't have respect for your car and you think, oh, I don't ever need an oil change. I don't respect my car. That car's gonna break down on you pretty soon. Oh, I'm not gonna use gasoline in my car. Let me fucking put water in it. Oh, yeah, that's gonna work. You know, you don't have respect for it. And, and people People, what happens when you start disrespecting people? Then they don't respect you at the end of the day. And then you start pushing people away. You disrespect your boyfriend or girlfriend. It's not gonna work out for you in the long term. So you gotta have respect for money just like you gotta have respect for everything in life. Number four, number four. You don't get caught up in stock market, short-term stock market fluctuations. If your stock goes up five or ten percent, or down five or ten percent, like you don't get uh, emotionally involved. Like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh my gosh! It doesn't mean you don't look at it. it. Doesn't mean you don't research why did that stock go up that day? Why did that stock go down? But you don't like. It doesn't bother you. Like, if your your money goes down, if you got a hundred thousand dollars in a stock and it goes down ten percent, you just lost ten thousand dollars in the short term, and you didn't technically lose it, but you're down that amount, right? sucks absolutely but at the same time uh, you don't get caught up in that because you know just as easily you can make that 10% back and plus much more and if you believe going back to number two there if you if you're confident in your own decision making what, what are you worried about in the short term? Because you're a long-term investor, right? You're a long-term investor. You're thinking about this for years to come. So why am I going to worry about what happened this week when I'm worrying what's happening in the next three years? That's the difference. Why am I worried about what's happening in the last three days when I'm worried about the next three years? And I get it a lot of times from stock market from beginners. You know, they'll say, oh, such and such, especially if I talk about stock. Oh, such and such stock went up, you know, this amount today. What, what happened? What's going on? Or uh, went down and it's like, Dude, I, I don't care. Like, if my stock went up five, ten percent, like, I'm not just gonna make a video about it because it doesn't really, you know, it make a big difference to me. I'm worried about what's happening long term in that stock at the end of the day. So, show me a person that at the end of the day they don't get caught up in all that short term stuff. I'll show you someone that's probably gonna be successful long term in the stock market. And number five, you gotta actually have passion for it. You gotta actually have passion for it. I cannot imagine reading through a 10K or a 10Q if I didn't have passion for it. I absolutely have passion for stock market investing. If you don't have passion for stock market investing, just stick your money in a 401K or an index fund or something like that or something else with your money because Stock picking is not for you. you it's, if you're a stock picker like I am, you gotta have passion for it. You gotta love reading those 10Ks and 10Qs, listening to those conference calls. You gotta love that stuff. You gotta love being on that Apple conference call if you're investing in Apple. You gotta love being on that Win Resorts conference call if you're in Win Resorts. Like you gotta love that stuff. You gotta like like that gets you excited. Like watching a football game is like like as important as watching a football game is to me. And I love watching football. Like. Oh, listen to a Win Resorts conference call, like that's my football game right there. Like that, I love that shit. I have a passion for it. I'm crazy about it. So if you don't have passion for it, dude, don't 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 mess with stock market investing. Stick your money in an index fund. Let someone else manage your money at that point because it's not for you if you didn't really have the passion for it because it takes a lot of work to be a successful investor. And if you don't have the work ethic because you don't have the passion, it's going to be hard for you to succeed just like anything in life. You got to have that passion for it, guys. You can't trick 
passion at the end of the day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Five signs that you could be a stock market multimillionaire. Uh, long term, long term, not like, oh, next year you're going to be one. Uh, long term, and, and if you have all these traits and you, you're confident and you're like, I have all these traits, I can tell you you're going to do freaking phenomenal over the long term in the stock market. And if you don't have these traits over the long term, you're probably not going to be very successful or you're just going to be battling to try to beat the market every year. You're, it's just not going to work out. Maybe you get lucky one year and have a really good year, but over five years, over 10 years, over 20 years, probably not going to be successful, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this today. Leave a thumbs up if you did enjoy this. Leave me a comment if you have anything to say about this video. I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section. If you just came across this channel, you may want to subscribe. We talk personal finance on the channel. We talk entrepreneurship. I'm an actual business owner. I give away so many business tips. We talk stock market investing more than anything. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a great day.